Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Possum Gardens. My name is Stephanie. I put out regular content on home gardening and my successes and failures. And today we're gonna to be talking about strawberries. Now this is gonna be part one in a three-part series I'm gonna do on how to choose strawberries, how to care for them, what you're gonna do um, during years one, two, three, um, and then we'll do a harvest and storage, different ways to store and preserve your strawberries as well. The first thing you wanna kinda of think about is what zone you live in. So strawberries can live in zones three through 10 and do very well. So there are three types of strawberry plants to choose from. So we have what's called a June bearing strawberry. And what that is, is it's gonna be a plant that gives you one harvest of strawberries a year. And it's gonna harvest like its name in June. They also are gonna send off a lot of runners. And if you don't know what a runner is, all a runner is is basically, if you think about a strawberry plant as like a vine, and that the plant you planted is the mother plant, basically it's gonna create like a vine and it's gonna make individual strawberry plants along that vine called daughters. So June bearing plants create tons and tons of runners. One plant can generate up to 100 daughter plants in a year. Your strawberry patch will last about three to five years depending on how you take care of it. So the second type of strawberry is an ever bearing variety. And what that means is you're basically going to get, you're going to get your normal June crop, but then you're also going to get a secondary crop in late summer or you know, early fall time. Now the third type is a day neutral variety. And what this is, it's it's pretty cool, is so it was developed from an ever bearing plant. And the day neutral varieties essentially kind of give you a continuous harvest all season long, as long as you know the conditions are right. So if it gets too hot, they'll stop producing um, buds and it'll wait till the temperature comes back down, but then it will go right back to work and be making you fruit. Um, the other thing about day neutral varieties, and I also didn't mention this about ever bearing, is they both produce significantly less runners than the June bearing. And there's pros, to, pros and cons to that. Um, I find a lot more pros than cons myself, but maybe that's just because I don't like wrestling in all the runner plants. So a day neutral, you'll probably replace your plants every, I would say, two to three years, and ever bearing more like three to four years. And like now there's a fourth type of berry plant, it's called an alpine strawberry. Now the alpine strawberry is a smaller white berry and it supposedly has hints of pineapple in it. It actually used to be favored by European nobility. Um, I've never grown these myself. So if anybody else grows these and knows of a good place to actually get these, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd be really curious to so the next thing you want to think about is what does a strawberry plant need to grow? Do you have conditions you know, on your property to actually plant these strawberries? So the number one thing you're going to need is full sun. So it needs about at least six hours of sun a day, um, especially if you're going to choose a June bearing or an ever bearing variety. Now if you don't have any full sun and, you're think and you still want to grow strawberries and you have maybe some part sun or part shade, go ahead and choose the day neutral variety. It's much more tolerant of shade. The other thing it needs is a nice, loose, moist soil, um, but it cannot be soggy. Strawberries do not handle watery roots very well at all, um, and it will cause a lot of issues with your fruit rotting as well. So now you can plant strawberries in raised beds, in containers, lots of different ways to grow strawberries. Um, you can just put them in the ground, on hillsides, in mounds. I have mine on a hillside kind of in, I guess it's not really a raised bed, but there's definitely some wooden beds on the hillside there to keep the dirt up so they don't, the dirt's not always tumbling down the hill. Um, containers are really popular and you think about it, if you don't have a good place where there's full sun, but you maybe have a deck or something that's in the sun, the, planting strawberries in a container and putting them out on that sunny spot in the deck is a really good solution. Our neighbor boy, he actually just found a piece of steel pipe in the woods and created a strawberry tower out of it. Maybe when it gets going, I'll uh, go over there and I'll get, show, guys, show you guys kind of what he did. It's pretty interesting. But there are definitely some differences in how you're going to care for your strawberries if you're going to use a container. So you got to make sure that you are, depending on your container, that you're watering enough. And if you're not going to care for your strawberries over the winter that you plant in a container, choose a day neutral variety or something that's not going to, um, that's more of like type of an annual type of strawberry. Now if you do want to plant June bearing or something like that in the pot, that's great, but just remember you are going to need to winterize it somehow, whether you bring it inside or, I don't know, put it out in the garden and cover it up with mulch and then unbury it next year. 
Right now I have an Everbearing variety called Ozark Beauty. It's pretty much the standard for Everbearing. Um, they're very hearty, um, good sized berries, good flavor. I've been pretty pleased with them so far. And then today I'm going to plant a day neutral variety called Seascape, which is also a pretty hearty variety. It's supposed to have really good flavor and get good berries. So I mentioned that, you know, berries and stuff have different tastes. That's another thing you want to consider. So look at what that variety, you know, what, what is it being promoted? What is it being grown for? Some are grown for strawberries taste, how you want to use your strawberry, whether you want to freeze them or turn them into jam. Um, some have good disease tolerance and others may not. Some are more water tolerant or heat tolerant. Like these are things that you might want to consider depending on the conditions that you have, um, how much care you're willing to give your plants and then how you actually want to use your strawberry spore. You're going to be planting your strawberry plants um, in the early spring. So in the south that might mean like February to April or in the north it's more like April, early May. Um, my plants, I ordered them online and they arrived on May 2nd, which is actually a little late for the season, but I ordered them later than I anticipated this year. But usually if you're ordering them from online nursery, based on what zone they're being shipped to is going to determine when they ship them to you. So when they arrive, they should be ready to plant. You can go to your local nursery and order your plants. Um, you can probably even just purchase them at Lowe's or Walmart if you're interested. Um, then there's there's tons of other online catalogs that you could get plants from. So one thing you want to make sure that you do is when your plants do arrive, um, if you do order them from an online catalog or by mail, they, is that when they arrive, don't forget to open up the package and give them a good look over and make sure that your plants do look healthy. Um, so here I have mine. Like my new cup. I got to specialize it and pick out myself. And then I have my two little puppies on here. I have Boomer, my beagle, and then this is Luna May. She's my black and tan coon hound, and she's the sweetest, cutest thing. Though also probably the most obnoxious creature to ever walk the face of the earth. You can ask my neighbors. They listen to her bark at trucks and traffic all day long. Um, so these are kind of how my strawberries arrive. They just kind of shipped in a plastic bag like this. They are rubber band together, and then they had some instructions that said, you know, if you're not ready to plant them right away, go ahead and put them in your refrigerator in the crisper drawer. So I've looked mine over. They all look pretty healthy. Um, they all have some sort of like new growth on there. You can see they have some leaves coming in, um, nice roots. They feel dry but moist, if that makes sense. Um, they don't feel like they're you know, super crunchy or anything like that. You don't want that. You just want them to feel dry, but still like there's a live plant here because otherwise you're probably not going to get anything to grow. The other thing you want to think about when you go to plant your, your strawberries is how you want to lay them out. Now, if you have June bearing strawberries, you want to make sure to leave room for some daughter plants. So you're going to kind of like move those runners where you want them to grow. Um, and fill, use the runners to fill in gaps. So you want to keep that in mind when you're choosing. You can kind of do it in rows or, you know, staggered rows. Now you want to dig your hole deep enough that it's deep enough for you to fan out the roots. So as you see, this guy has quite a little root system on them. Some of them are four to six inches long. If they're longer when you get them, you want to trim them. Don't. They shouldn't be any longer than six inches when you put them in the ground. But you want to make sure that when you're planting the strawberry plant, that you're spreading, you're kind of fanning out the roots. So your hole has to be wide enough to take um, the whole root mass into account. Now the other thing you want to take into consideration is strawberry plant anatomy. So you have your roots here, okay, and then you have your plant here. And there's this little center area in the middle kind of, you see where everything kind of is all balled up together, where the plant is coming out of here. So this is called, right here, this area, the crown. You want to make sure you do not, do not bury the crown. Okay, cardinal rule number one in strawberry planting: don't bury the crown. You kind of want that to be at your ground level. Okay, that's where all of your strawberry plants are kind of going to grow off of that. It's really important for that to not be buried. So again, don't bury the crown. Okay, so the last thing you want to make sure that you do is after you plant your strawberries, make sure that you mulch them in somehow to retain that moisture in the soil. Okay, so 
you got all this information ahead. Let's go outside to the garden and actually, I'm gonna actually show you the spot that I've chosen for my strawberries and I'm gonna plant them and show you how I plant them. So this is my strawberry patch. These are all my ever-bearing ones that I mentioned earlier. Like I said, they're Ozark Beauty is the variety I grew here. And as you can see, they're all in blossom already. Ooh, I'm excited. And then over here, this little patch up above is where I'm gonna plant my day neutral variety today. So it needs some love and care right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the weeds out, give it a quick turn, get some food in there for the new little plants. Um, and I'll come back when we're ready to go ahead and start planting some stuff. So we've got our plant all fanned out in the hole like this. You can see some new growth coming up. Right there. And then you've got this little sad looking leaf on the top. But that's okay. And then we're just going to bury. Essentially just think about it as in you're going to bury the roots basically. If you feel like maybe you put too much on it, like the crown is a little too deep down, like don't be afraid to just give them a little tug like that and pull the crown up. So you can see the crown, it's not buried, the rest of the plant's up, the roots are completely covered. So this little guy is all ready to go. And now we're going to plant the other one. The next one's about six inches away. If you're doing June bearing, you want to plant them a little bit further apart so that you have space to, you know, put a runner this way between the two plants or maybe even run them on a diagonal pattern this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant the rest of them and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. Everything is mulched in. They all look really good. I planted them a little thicker at the top and right along where the hill starts to turn down. Just hoping they'd be a little thicker there to try to keep the soil in place. And then I didn't have enough to do it as thick in these bottom two rows, but that's okay. That's okay. They'll fill in. Um, now that your strawberry plants are planted and mulched, you're not necessarily done with what you need to know. I know I'm making strawberries sound really complicated. Um, they are and they're not at the same time. They're a really easy berry to grow. They just do require some maintenance and care to um, really get the best out of your harvest. But honestly, you could plant them and do nothing to them and still get strawberries. Your harvest just wouldn't be um, as good. Your berries might not get as big and they might not be as healthy, that's all. Strawberries are going to need about an inch of water a week. So make sure that if it's not raining enough that you're somehow supplementing that water. Either break out the garden hose or the watering can or if you have a drip irrigation system, even better, jealous of you because I have to water my plants using the, shower, the little garden wand. Even though I do find that very therapeutic after work for some reason. It's much better than doing the dishes, that's for sure. You don't want to fertilize your strawberries, okay? You've just planted them, do not fertilize them. You don't want to fertilize the strawberries at all until the runners actually start to appear. When you do finally go to fertilize them, you just want to use a complete fertilizer, like a 10-10-10 or something like that. Anything like that is fine. I usually use Job's granular um, fertilizer. I like that a lot because, honestly, it's being a granular organic fertilizer. 
I can't burn my plants. If anybody has used miracle Grow in the liquid form, um, you've probably experienced that. I've definitely have. My father was so good at using it. He never burned plants, I felt like. But whenever I do it, I always end up burning my plants, even when I follow the directions. So I stick to that granular organic one. And I really like Job's because it's actually made in the U.S. Um, so that's my um, fertilizer of choice. But you can use whatever you have on hand or whatever works for you. June, really, you're just going to fertilize like one time after the runners appear. Now, day neutral and ever-bearing strawberries, giving them smaller doses kind of spread up over the year, like once a month, that is better for them. So the other part you need to remember, and this is the hardest part for any gardener, when you plant your June-bearing strawberries that first year, you want to pinch off all the blossoms as they appear. You don't want to let them go to berry at all. You want the plant to focus on putting down good roots and not be trying to put down roots and grow food at the same time. They can't be splitting that energy up. So unfortunately, you're not gonna get a harvest at all that first year. You're gonna to have to pinch off all of your blossoms on your June bearing strawberries and it's very disheartening. I'm sorry, I know, but promise, I promise, I promise it'll be so worth it next year, okay? Now, if you have a day neutral or a June, or a June bearing, sorry, not June bearing, ever bearing strawberry. Now those two, pinch them off for the first couple of weeks you know, maybe the first six weeks or so and make sure they put down that good root base. But then any blossoms they produce after that, you can go ahead and let them fruit. You know, that's totally fine. So our strawberries have blossoms on them and this is how you pick them off. Super easy and intuitive. You definitely don't need a video on it. Here's one of our strawberries we planted this year. You're literally just gonna take and just, I usually just kind of pinch them off with my fingernail, but you can also just kind of give it a tug and it will detach. So you're just going to do that to anywhere that you see blossoms. Now once your plant starts sending off runners, if you planted a June bearing variety like I mentioned, you're going to want to use those runners to kind of fill in any gaps depending on the pattern you chose to plant. That will allow you to maximize your harvest for years to come. Um, that daughter plant will put down roots and it will actually become its own plant. And then you'll have multiple plants producing strawberries and you can kind of keep rotating them. So when that mother, the original mother plant no longer is producing really well, it doesn't matter because you have all these daughter plants you planted that are in their first, second or third year and still producing a lot of berries. Now you can also use these daughter plants and um, let them root and then dig them up, clip them off the vine with the mother plant, dig them up and move them into a whole new patch. You can give them away as friends, I mean, to friends and family and things like that. You could sell them if you wanted to. So plant them in little containers. I've done this with my ever bearing ones even, where I've taken the runners essentially, and I put them into like a little, here, I have one right here. Just a little, a little container like this, and I use a paper clip to kind of pin the roots down to the soil and then the roots just start to kind of grow into the pot and then when i'm ready i clip the vine where it's connecting to its mother and i can ready to go i have a little plant already to transplant or give away to somebody so as i mentioned one mother plant can produce hundreds of daughters and that is just way too many to keep track of you're not going to have the space for all that and honestly it's going to create a jungly mess everything's going to get too bundled up together so you're gonna to wanna to place runners where you want them and anything that's not in those places, just cut them all off, okay? Cut them all off, throw them in the compost bin. So with the day neutral and ever bearing varieties, they're not gonna put off as many runners as I had mentioned before, but what they do put off in that first year, just go ahead and clip off the runners. Don't, don't let them focus on runners that you're, make them focus on making you a fruit crop and putting down their roots. Those are the two things that we wanna have them focus on. So the other thing you wanna remember is that you're gonna to need to winterize your berries somehow. So in the fall, after the first couple of frosts, you're gonna notice the leaves are gonna to start to kind of turn brown and crispy. And this is the time you wanna start thinking about how you're gonna protect them and what you're gonna to use to cover them up over the winter time. Now, the reason that strawberries are called strawberries is because people have traditionally used straw as the cover of mulch for the berries. Um, this works really well. I used that my very first year. Uh, one thing to mention is when you put down a bunch of fluffy straw on your strawberry beds, Make sure you water the straw as crazy, as weird as that sounds, water the straw just so it has some weight. Otherwise you will end up breaking a tire bale of straw out of the neighbor's yard, <laughs> like I did. 
So that's it for today. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to hit that thumbs up on this video and hit subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content and want to see more. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for stopping by.